Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Uh, today, if you can see, we are actually inside of Figma and not Photoshop. Now, why is this? Today, I want to show you guys how you can make a dynamic component uh, for Roblox UI design. What exactly do I mean? Allow me to show you guys an example. So right here, if you can see, I have a vendor shop right i have a filters button right here now if i click okay on this button you will see in the layers it is actually purple now up here i have a state i can go from i can go from active to default and now you can see it automatically changes now here is why this is important because as a designer, all right, your design software like this should house uh, your the entire design. Uh, you could think of this as like the blueprint. And when you import the actual UI into Studio, it becomes a, uh, I would say a prototype, right? Or a working model. Uh, if not a working model, it is a, let's say, if you are creating a physical, uh, product it becomes the first iteration the first model right and once you have your UI inside of inside of studio that allows the programmer to work on it however for the best workflow you want your design file separate so right here because I have this I can very easily toggle back and forth if I was to explain the design to my coder I could say Okay, right here, this is the pressed uh, state because it has the filters open. However, when the filters is closed like that, we're gonna have the filters right here uh, in the default state. So as you can see, and of course I can copy this whole frame to uh, present or to show this separately without having to, you know, adjust it back and forth. But uh, as you can see here, I have all the components right over here. I have the filters. I can simply drag this out. And now I have a working component like this, as you can see. So how can we actually make this for ourselves? Hey guys, real quick, check out the design assets we have on the store. We have five icon packs and also tons of UI that you can get. Check it out if you want to grab some assets for yourself and i hope you enjoy this video i will walk you guys through uh step by step so yeah i'm going to make a copy of this canvas use this uh, just to construct our uh, basic button and i'm going to delete uh, this stuff right here this will be our button okay so we're gonna start with let's go for a basic frame if you hit F on your keyboard or down here you have the frame option and you go for a simple rectangle like so okay now we're gonna hit fill right here and this will be outside of background okay background is gonna go let's go send to back and uh, on the canvas, I have an auto layout that automatically places my frame in the center like this. Right over here. Okay, so once we're, once we're here, we're going to stylize our button. Um, over here, if you can see, this is my style. Um, I have a gradient right here. I have uh, the inside stroke and also the outside show. So, so I'm going to copy my fill and then I'm gonna go ahead right here, go paste like so. Let's take a look at my gradient. So it goes from the bottom color, this one, to the top and you can see one five, one five, one five and one E, one E, one E, okay? Now we're going to add a basic corner radius. I'm going to go for 25, for example, keep it, you know, uh, or 20, I guess. Okay. 
So now we're going to copy our frame. We're going to go Control C, and then we're going to go Control V to paste and drag this inside uh, because here we go for center, uh, take off the fill, we go for stroke instead, okay, and then increase the weight five for now. We go for a nice color, and then we're going to resize our stroke, okay, like this. As you can see, this is looking pretty good so far. Okay, we can modify the corner radius to kind of accommodate uh, the padding a little more. So here is our basic style so far. Uh, for the main frame, I'm going to go for a stroke right here, white three. We go outside and decrease the opacity to 65. Right here is my button. Now we're gonna go for our text. You see right here, um, I actually have a cool gradient here. Uh, we could also make that if you want. So we're gonna go for T and click. We're going to type out our text. Uh, we can go for, for example, I'm gonna say, um, continue, okay? Let's go for constraint center these two right here and then let's go increase the size 32 nope 52 all right let's go center and also a stroke weight increase it increase and I'm gonna say the opacity uh, 35 and go for that okay now if you're satisfied you can obviously keep this um, now here is what I will do. I'm going to change the color because we're going to, this will be basically the variant where it is not yet able to be clicked, right? Uh, let's say this could be a, a dialogue UI, for example, and, uh, until the dialogue is complete, players can't click on the button just yet. So we have our basic button uh, if you ask me it looks pretty good <laughs> I mean what do you guys think anyways now here comes the fun part how can we make this into a component let's take a look so we're going to right click we're going to hit create component as you can see this whole thing turns purple up here we're going to hit add property right here we're gonna go variant we're going to rename the property and go for state, for example, you can see right here, uh, values, default. So we have one variant here. We're going to hit uh, add to make a second. So here is our button component. This is a parent. Uh, and now we have two states. So we have a default and a state two. I'm going to call this our Let's say active. For example. So for the active, we're going to change the fill and the colors. So for fill, we can go for a different color. Uh, go. I'm going to go for apply styles and go for my selected color right here, as you can see. Now I will show you guys uh, the properties. You can see from here it is one two B A B four to here it is five six E E E nine. Okay. Here it is. Now I'm going to modify the ring color as well. Right here, we're gonna go for this color. Right over here. And then obviously we're going to change our text color. So I'm gonna go for this right here. Now, as you can see, we have two different variants. How can we use this? Well, it's quite simple. If we hold Alt and if we hold Alt and drag out a variant like this, as you can see, up here I can go from active to default. As you can see, it is that simple. Uh, with this, I'm going to take my button and go out here, from there, and take this, bring it back out, and we go send. 
to front. Now, take a look. Right here, we can go forward. We can go for active. Back to default. You can copy and have two right here, just like so. Now, hopefully, you guys can see how um, just how effective or uh, efficient this will make your design workflow. Because up here, I have done the same thing for the cards. So right here, I have two properties. I have rarity and state. So if you go from uh, selected to default, from rare to epic to common, as you can see. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something valuable. Let me know if you guys want me to make a tutorial on how to design this complete vendors shop UI. Uh, if we take a look at the outlines, I think it's pretty sick, right? Let's take a look at uh, the filters right here. So yeah, uh, you can see Figma. I could zoom all the way in and everything and it is all vectorized. As you can see, no pixels. Anyways, real quick, before I let you guys go, check out the Design Academy. I'm going to be adding all of our premium tutorials right there. Uh, it is one single bundle. Unlock it and get all of the resources forever. Now, obviously, you can also unlock our unlimited access and get all assets uh, for life. If you guys want to support my work, drop a like and check out my store. With that being said, I appreciate your time and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.